Hey everybody, welcome back to the video's channel and today I wanted to talk about some really cool features in the v3 edition of VUSVX code extension, but well, we all knew something happened this week and we have to address it. So here's my opinion on the acquisition of Nux Labs by Marcel. Here we go. So in case for the people who have not heard, and there are probably not that many, uh, Vercel, Nox Labs um, both announced together that Nox Labs and Vercel will join forces to be more precise that Vercel will buy the company Nox Labs and thus also hiring several core team members. That includes Sebastian Chopin, the CEO of Nox Labs and also the creator of Nox itself. Also Daniel Rowe, the lead of the framework, who was contracted by Nox Labs and never employed there, but still the creator of Nitro, so Puya, and Anthony Fu, I mean, you all know him, he doesn't need a big introduction, right? Like Vue, V, Nux, core team member, writing so many amazing open source packages. And they were hired, the company was acquired, and the feedback on that from the community was quite mixed. From people saying, oh, it's amazing, to some doomsday scenario. So I would like to share some of my own personal opinion here. Funnily, some people even congratulated me um, to joining Vercel, but actually I'm, I'm not joining Vercel. This was never in the picture as I was also never employed by Nox Labs. In fact, I joined Void Zero in March, Avenue's company, just in case you missed it. And if you wonder if I had any idea of the acquisition, well, no, I didn't. I had no idea what was happening behind the scenes. And that's also a good that way because, well, these things have to be done in silence until every agreement has been made and then 30 minutes or so before the announcement publicly that this was shared with the team. So yeah, I had no idea either. I was quite surprised, um, but I also understand the reasoning behind it. So let's uh, get into the first important part here. Nuxt Labs is not Nuxt. This is important. I was always keen on explaining the difference between the company that was created by Sebastian to offer products around Nuxt, paid products, also free products, quite some free things actually, and of course, some core team members were hired by Nox Labs or contracted by Nox Labs. So for example, Anthony was employed by Nox Labs. Daniel, as mentioned before, was contracted as a maintainer. And uh, as said before, I'm not part of Nox Labs. I collaborated with them on certain occasions as a consultant, but I was never contracted for maintenance or hired or anything like that. And once again, Nox Labs has been acquired by Vercel, but not Nox.js. Before we dive into what that means for Nux, let's talk about what it means for the company, Nux Labs. No matter if you take a look at social media or also on the official blog post from Vercel, you will always read the four names mentioned already. Sebastian Chopin, obviously, and then Daniel Rowe, Puya Parsar, and Anthony Fu. But of course, there were way more people at Nux Labs. So what actually happened to them? And the good news is all the developers who were hired by Nux Labs or were on contracts they were offered to join Vercel and they joined the company. So all developers who also worked on Nux Studio, Nux Hub, Nux UI Pro, et cetera, and all the products of Nux Labs, they are also joining Vercel now. That brings us to the next topic though. What will happen with the products I just mentioned? Nux Studio, Nux Hub, Nux UI Pro, et cetera, that Nux Labs was working on before. Truth to be told, all these products are not just simply gone. No, they will be made open source, which is a great plus for the whole ecosystem. It's always nice to have some more open source alternatives, especially if they were paid before, right? And now that the Nux Labs has no need to uh, make money anymore because the company was acquired, these products can go into open source. And even more than that, Nux Hub, that is right now based on Cloudflare mostly, is planned to be made platform agnostic to work also with other hosting providers. Fun fact, this was planned for quite a while, but of course the problem is first of all, shipping features. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate that it happened before, but now even better that this will happen. You might wonder though, what happens about the hosted versions of, for example, a Nux Studio, or of course the uh, Nux Hub Admin. These will be shut down at the end of the year, but everything will be self-hostable. And I'm pretty sure that someone in the community will be up for offering some kind of hosting for the people who still want to not host them uh, on their own and just want that convenience. I count on you folks out there. Also, your chance for a business, I suppose. Nevertheless, the last thing that is the biggest benefit for Nux Labs besides these things is obviously they don't worry anymore about runway, funding, and salaries. Because as said before, Nux Labs was there to make open source sustainable and pay not only the employees of Nux Labs, but also the core team members that worked on Nux on their time uh, salaries 
And now this is covered by Resell, which is quite helpful. So funding is secured. And from there, we come to the next topic. What does it mean for Nuxt.js? So for the framework. And the first thing people were so afraid that, oh yeah, the framework will be gutted. There will be a vendor lock-in. It will just vanish to Nirvana. First of all, no, the roadmap itself will stay the same. Uh, nothing will change there. Uh, just because of the acquisition of Nuxt Labs, the roadmap of Nuxt won't change. The core team will continue to work on Nuxt.js and important reminder, the core team at the time of recording this video are eight people. Four of them were hired, the four we mentioned already, and the other four, including me, are not working at Vercel. They work in other jobs for me at Void Zero, other people doing freelancing or having day jobs. So that will not change either. And that was already mentioned. And all of us, no matter if it's the four people hired or the four other people, we are there for an open Nuxt.js, an independent Nuxt, and also for Nitro. And uh, we also are very vocal about that. Another plus for the Nuxt ecosystem is that Sebastian actually has more time for coding because he doesn't have to lead a company uh, as well. So we get him back from not only steering to go back to more coding as well. I think that's one of the things he looks more forward the, the most to, actually. Last but not least, if you're worried, okay, the roadmap doesn't change now, but what's the intention? Vercel will not interfere with Nuxt.js, not with the roadmap, not with features. Everything will stay MIT licensed. There won't be any render lock-in as before. That's very important to mention. And also Danny Rowe, the core team lead, also stated that multiple times and said that if there would have been any strings attached, he wouldn't have made a deal and wouldn't have joined Vercel. But Vercel really have no interest in every communication I've had with them. They have no interest in owning or controlling Nuxt. The whole thing is that they want us to be independent. They want us to be free to do what we're doing. And I, to be perfectly blunt, I wouldn't be doing this or part of this if that weren't the case. But yes, I mean, it's been really, really remarkable actually to chat with people in leadership of Vercel um, and just talk about the vision that they have and the reason they want to bring Nuxt on board. And a lot of it is because they want it to be independent. They want us to keep pursuing the vision that we've put out there, um, which I, I've got to say is, is, is really nice. But if you even then don't believe that this will happen, then let's take a look at the governance document. Because yes, Nuxt, same as Nitro, actually, they have a governance document and it's clearly explained what the goal is, what the status is. And Nuxt is an independent open source MIT license framework for building web applications. There are many separate parts to the project, including Nuxt web framework itself, official modules and core libraries as well as a broad ecosystem of contribution and collaboration. So then some roles are defined, like who are the authors, who is the project lead, Daniel right now. He could even be replaced. Actually, this is not like a position that is forever. It says the current project lead. So just saying that if something would happen in the future, then there is a good chance that not only the team or the, the team who is against that change will be vocal, there are also ways to make sure that things go as they were before. But I don't think that will happen. I think things will be fine. Uh, I trust um, the core team, um, especially Daniel with his intention there. And uh, I, I don't see, I don't know, people saying, oh yeah, now we push uh, view server components. They will never happen in Vue.js itself. And Nuxt had server components for ages already. So no. Uh, also important reminder, think of Svelte. Rich Harris, the maintainer of Svelte was hired also by Vercel years ago. And anything bad that happened there, can't remember. And that brings us to the next point. What does the acquisition mean for the ecosystem? And there is actually a quite central point that was kind of touched already when we talked about Nux Labs. Because ideally, now there is more funding available for the ecosystem team, for other projects, libraries, etc. Because the sponsorship money as well, coming through GitHub sponsors, Open Collective, does not need to be used for salaries anymore, right? Same as the funds that come in through Nux Labs. So ideally, this would not only mean more funding, also more transparency, because there is no like weird concept of, okay, what is Nuxt Labs, what is Nuxt as before. And I think this could also benefit the Vue ecosystem very well, because obviously Nuxt is built on Vue. So I hope to see some improvements there as well. Last but not least, a benefit that is hard to express necessarily in numbers, but I think there will be more eyes and more attention on Nuxt and Vue and also Nitro and Unjs hopefully. So we've seen it with Svelte before too. Now through the acquisition already, social media was blowing up and we see more and more people looking into that. And some people are like, okay, I never had Nitro on the radar because I was not much into the Vue ecosystem. Now they, they discover it. Other way around as well, people say, okay, great. Uh, I'm looking for a new framework to learn. Let's have a look at, at Nuxt Vue, that seems fun. 
So I see that there will be some big benefits there for the ecosystem. Of course, we will see how things play out with all of these, but I definitely can imagine that. And coming from Nuxt, we also have to talk about Nuxt server engine, Nitro. And what happens with Nitro? Well, Nitro will stay open source as well, very similar to Nuxt. Puya can work full time on it, which uh, hopefully will speed up not only the release of Nitro 3 upcoming, right? But also further versions, all the packages in Unjs 2, etc. And also there, we have presets that are set for all hosting providers and Nitro is meant to be the solution without vendor lock-in with full agnosticity, also runtime agnostic. So that will stay too. This is also mentioned in Nitro's governance document. So if we have a look here, Nitro is a toolkit for building platform and runtime agnostic web servers with clear and portable standards. The document describes the principles by which the project is governed. And then we see project leadership, agnostic at all costs, that's also quite important, standalone but inclusive, deployment presets, embracing standards, hackable, etc. So we also see the commitment here to stay agnostic. And you can take a look at the, the governance documents, you can take a look at what will happen. I don't think anything will change there. Once again, Puya, I also know him for quite some time now, he is very much a fundamentalist when it comes to open source. And I don't think in any of his interest and neither for Vercel would be to uh, gut Nitro now. So then less people would use it. Same with, with Nuxt.js. If features would be removed, this would hurt everyone. Everyone. Yeah, but how about, how about Vue? For Vue, not too much changes. Evan, Evan Yu, the creator of Vue.js was invested in Nuxt Labs, got his exit and was slightly optimistic about the acquisition. Of course, he mentioned that he was a bit worried regarding Vercel and monopolization, but he also mentioned he's positive because of how they handled it with Swelt the years before. And of course, we're all happy for maintainers to get a good salary for doing open source. The Vue team stays independent, so there is no big corporation hiring the core maintainers or the core maintainer directly. Still, there will be a close collaboration between the Vue and the Nux team as before. That's important. So there's, I don't know, no relationships harmed or anything like that. And now one of the most interesting questions. What does Vercel get out of this? And the answer is, first of all, reach an audience, right? Like hiring Daniel, Sebastian, Puya, and Anthony brings audience and also expertise. So in a, in a way, entrance to the Vue and Nuxt ecosystem. Now, the big follow-up question would be, why would they want that? And there are different ways to take a look at that. Time will tell, but I think the commitment to open source and the open web would help there to say instead of, okay, we have Next.js, we have to have the win the framework war, saying, why not invest in multiple and make sure Versal is the best platform to deploy them to so they have seamless experience. It doesn't mean the frameworks themselves needs features to work better with Vercel, but last but not least, just making sure things work on the platform well. And that's worked for Svelte, as I mentioned before, and Svelte Kit, so I can also see that working for Nuxt while them supporting all hosting providers. Another interesting part will be that Nitro is apparently more and more interesting to uh, people at Vercel and also around there. Uh, so Jared Palmer, who worked at Vercel before and left the company, mentioned that uh, Nitro is, is quite interesting. And um, all in all, I think this is, in a way, also Vercel's commitment to openness while being criticized before to not be open, now opening up Next.js with adapters and investing in the open web. So I definitely see that coming from that way, given that there were no strings attached in the acquisition, but we all know time will tell in the end. So there are only two questions left. And the first one is, who are the actual winners in quotation marks in this acquisition? Also here, we will see. But I think, first of all, the maintainers getting good salary, don't have to worry about runway and money anymore. Also there, I don't know any internals, but I definitely know that, uh, well, if you lead a company, this is definitely a part, especially as a startup with investors. Then the community will benefit, ideally, through more funding, sponsorship, and awareness. And ideally also for sell, obviously. So a win-win-win for all of us. But this is also something that the time will tell. Something that's more clear though is the losers of that acquisition. And interestingly, here we see Vercel investing again in another framework after, of course, their own homebrew Next.js, after they also funded the first month of Tanstack Stars development, after they hired Rich Harris from Swelts, now they invest in Nuxt. And I wonder, are they the only company doing that? Why are there no other companies who stepped up and said like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go for a tight integration, use their experience, their knowledge. So from my perspective, the losers of this acquisition could be companies like Cloudflare or Amazon, where I think it would be very interesting for them to invest in a framework. And people on social media are already vocal saying, oh yeah, 
the Dear Orange Company, Time to Rescue Astro Before It's Too Late, uh, or similar. As Astro is also VC backed, then there's the Astro Company and along these lines. But I definitely think that Cloudflare could have benefited maybe even more, also giving the competition between Cloudflare and Vercel there. But that's all just a big question mark. Still, I think it could have been interesting to see that. Last but not least, I want to address some worries. Because, of course, we talked about it for a while. I've shown, a, I would say, rather more positive side to this thing. But if we take a look at social media and Reddit, we see quite some doomsday scenarios with like, okay, the entitification starts. Now Nux will be gone, etc. I personally, as part of the core team, don't think so. Mainly because I know how we've acted before, how we've steered the framework. And that's just because some people are hired at the company now this should not make a difference, especially because half of us are still completely free, independent, and not at the same company. And that makes the core team a bit more diverse as well. Besides the core team, we also have the ecosystem team of people from very different backgrounds and also different companies working together. So all in all, all this feedback is taken into account to steer the framework's direction. But uh, I also can only speak for myself here, um, I don't want to speak for Daniel or Sebastian. They can speak for themselves because we recorded a Deja Vu episode with them, uh, a lovely podcast, about 30 minutes, where Daniel and Sebastian talk about the acquisition and their feedback and their thoughts on that. And last but not least, also think of Swelt. As said before, multiple containers were hired. Things are going really well. It's very hands-off as they described it on social media before. So there is basically like, okay, you do you, uh, you lead your framework. And I personally think the same will happen for Nuxt. Now, time will tell if in a year this video didn't age well. Quote me, point it out, but I don't think that will happen. After all, most of these things are only speculations. I personally, as said before, I trust the people on the core team that they will do the right thing and put the project first. And if there were no strings attached by the, for the acquisition that was publicly announced as well, then I believe them that they're not. So let's see what the future brings. Don't be too worried. And if you have any questions, drop them below. Keen to answer them. See you around the YouTube channel next video or the Deja View episode if you haven't listened to it yet. Have a great day and happy hacking.